Hey, I'm Everett Abrams, the Wizard of Wood, and uh, today we're just going to have a little whiz talk uh, and talk about um, your customers and who is your customer. Is it the wood home? Is it the log cabin? Is it the deck? Or is it actually the customer? And why am I even bringing this up? Well, with exterior wood restoration um, and being a niche company, um, we're really looking at restoring high-end type of decks, log cabins, uh, wood-sided homes, and so forth, and we're restoring them to uh, the natural look of the wood. So we have, over a long period of time, you age yourself, but hey, what's the difference? When you're doing this for a long time, I think anybody doing over 20 years, 30 years, in this case over 32 years, you start to build up a relationship with customers, but you also build up a relationship with the structure. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you really play your cards right, and this is what the fun of this stuff is, people sell homes, uh, they sell, the decks go with it. If they sell a home, what about the home? Why do I even bring this up? Good story I got for you. So if you've watched some of my videos, you've seen one of the homes we did was a Master and Duba home. Master and Duba is an exotic wood. It's called bullet wood um, because it really is the premium when we talk about wood as far as density, uh, beauty, so forth. I mean, it's called bullet wood because it's gonna last longer than, you know, us guys working on these, these structures. So I have this home, it's on a lake, it has all Master and Duba siding on the house. It's got Master and Duba fencing, Master and Duba uh, built out around the trash, uh, uh, containers. I have a Master and Duba deck with a cable railing. I mean, this thing is beautiful. Um, the other homeowner didn't tell me how much he spent on it, but the new homeowner told me that it was uh, over $400,000 was spent on all the wood on the outside deck, the wood siding, the fencing, everything. But you just check your uh, uh, Master and Duba about me you on know, Google Master and Duba, you'll see about it. It's, it's expensive, but it's really unbelievable wood. So anyway, long story short, I'm working on another high-end deck uh, and cedar sided home that we work on, paver patio, paver driveway uh, this year. I saw the house was up for sale. Um, I didn't approach the homeowners about it. I did try to stop in a couple of times, but it seemed like nobody was there. I don't know if they moved out ahead of time or not, but I saw the for sale sign. So I kept an eye on it. So. I went by today, or yesterday actually, the for sale sign was down. I went back to the job we're working on, I went the same way I went today, and I stopped in, and uh, as I was riding by, I saw that there was a Bronco, a newer Bronco in the driveway, and the door was open. I couldn't see anybody there, but the door was open, so I figured somebody's either there, or maybe they're taking groceries or something in the house. So I pulled in the driveway, and I just said, hey, my name's Everett Abrams, my company and I worked on this house uh, you know in the past and this is why it looks the way it does he says you worked on this house I said yes he goes this is unbelievable this house I said it is and then I had this big conversation about the house I described all the work so he knows that I was the guy that did the work and then we talked about the maintenance and that I would honor the maintenance schedule and he said it's great to, to meet you and to, and to find out you know who worked on the house because this house is beautiful that's why we bought it now I have a lot of log cabins in my community and a lot of people you know look at these log homes they were looking at log homes and then they saw this master and Duba home and they went with that I told them I said they made a great choice because uh, logs are what cedar pine whatever and they're, they're going to have rot, decay. you got to change the log. you got to repair. They're always upkeep on that. Master and Duba, I mean, just work on the staining and the sealing of it is, is about all you, not enough you're going to really need because um, the wood is just magnificent, and it, it holds up really well. So anyway, I had a very great conversation with the customer, and I'm going to go ahead and keep that. Now, just to make a long story short, I have customers with decks and homes that I'm on the third owner of. So we just keep getting passed on because somebody says, well, this looks great. You know, who, do, who did the work? Boom, boom, boom. And we've done that. Actually, because we also have our own products that um, they may have decided to do it themselves. And they said, okay, well, what'd you stain it with? And then they're still buying the products from us. So 
that's kind of a neat thing too. So it's pretty neat. It's, it's fun to have this company because of the things we do run into, but knowing that the customers stick with you and that you stay with a structure is really, really cool. Um, I don't know anything else where that kind of hap that kind of thing happens. It's rewarding because you kind of get rewarded by the people that were there, and you get rewarded by the people that are that are coming in. And a lot of times they'll refer us. Now the other thing too is, well, how do you get some of these? Now this one I stopped in, as I said, I saw the for sale sign up, and you will catch those. But if somebody, if you're calling back for a maintenance plan and nobody answers you, and you're like, wow, they always go with us. Why didn't they answer the the phone this time or something like that? Then you know, maybe you sit there and say, okay, well, maybe I should take a ride by and maybe knock on the door. Hey, how are you? Boom, boom, boom. And you'll find out there's usually a new homeowner and so forth. I've done that because they don't want to lose that customer because that house or that deck or log cabin is my customer too. I want to continue to take care of it. The other thing we do put in our estimates, and I would do the same thing, you guys should do the same thing, is that you would honor the maintenance plan and it's transferable. Um, if, if somebody were to sell. That way they refer you and you can keep working on the on the property and the same structure. So anyway, little whiz story today, a little whiz tip. Uh, it's how you keep working on these same structures. Uh, it's kind of interesting though, it's a little, you know, how do you look at this? Who is your customer? Is it the person? Is it the structure? Is it both? So things to think about, things to consider. But if you have that high-end market and you're working on things like log cabins and wood homes and beautiful decking and that kind of stuff, these kind of things, you don't want to lose touch with those. Stick with those customers. No matter who buys the house, <coughs> excuse me, whoever buys the house or has the uh, property, whoever sells it, you know, whoever buys it, I'm sorry, um, they still, they bought that for a reason. The house was beautiful. The deck was beautiful. That's why they bought it. And you can go up there and say, hey, you know why you bought it? Because you thought it looked really good? I'm the guy that did that. My company did that. And then that kind of gets you the foot in the door. And these kind of people really, they may shop you, but they may not. If you have a maintenance plan in, in place and it's a discounted maintenance plan because you've been taking care of it, um, you're in. Anyway, some food for thought. Uh, Consider who is your customer, stay in touch with it. It's not always the person, sometimes it is the structure. I'm Everett Abrams, The Wizard of Wood. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully this was a good whiz tip for uh, you niche people doing what I do. Have a great day, thanks for watching.